What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated three division world champion, former junior welterweight, undisputed world champion, currently the reigning WBO welterweight world champion, was widely considered by many to be the number one best pound for pound fight in the world. In Terrence Boy Crawford, it was 38 wins, no losses, no draw, 29 big wins by way of knockout. He is 34 years of age, five foot eight with a 74 inch arm reach. He reacts an undefeated, newly crowned three belt unified welterweight world champion superstar boxer, Earl the True Spence Jr., who is widely considered by many to be top three best pound for pound fighters in the world. Earl Spence is 28 wins, no losses, no draw, 22 big wins by way of knockout. He is 32 years of age, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach. Well, the passing of the, chort, the torch and the changing of the guards has taken place and they have reacted to four division world champion, Mexican superstar boxer, who is the undisputed reigning super middleweight world champion, widely considered to be the face of the sport of boxing, top three, if not the number one best pound for pound fight in the world in Saul Canelo Alvarez. So now Canelo Alvarez is now 57 wins, two losses, two draws, 39 big wins by way of knockout. Canelo Alvarez is 31 years of age, five foot eight with a 70 inch army. With that said, Canelo Alvarez is, uh, and Errol Spence is about the same age. Errol Spence is 32. Canelo Alvarez will be 32 soon. Uh, Terrence Crawford will be 35 in September. But with that said, he was widely considered the face of the sport of boxing and the best pound for pound fighter. Not many people had Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford one and two over him, okay? Uh, I had it, Terrence Crawford at one, Canelo Alvarez at two, because of his longevity and the achievements and being undisputed in four different weight classes. I mean, being undisputed at super middleweight and being a champion in four different weight classes. That's why I had him ahead of Errol Spence uh, and Errol Spence at number three. Well, that pound for pound list has changed and it dramatically changed. And the reason that it dramatically changed is because now Canelo Alvarez cannot be considered top three pound for pound best fighters in the world. And here's why. And so Terrence Crawford, he attested this and he says that there's no doubt now I'm the best number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And Errol Spence says he's becoming the face of the sport of boxing. So Errol Spence says, watch me become the face of the sport of boxing. Okay. I'm becoming the face of the sport of boxing as he is. So with that said, here's the reason why Canelo drastically dropped on the depth chart at the pound for pound list. It's not because he just took a loss. It's how he took a loss. And so people are going to tell you that, well, Canelo Alvarez took a loss because he dared to be great. He went up to light heavyweight and he went to challenge the WBA light heavyweight world champion, Russian superstar boxer, Dimitri Bevel. Now, he's not a superstar here in the States, but within the sport of boxing, he's a superstar, and he's a superstar in Russia. Is he a global superstar? No. But is he a superstar in the sport of boxing? Yes. And he's definitely a superstar in Russia. And Dimitri Bivol. Dimitri Bivol is now 20 wins, no losses, no draw, 11 wins by way of knockout. He's 31 years of age, 6 feet tall with a 72-inch arm age. So with that said, okay, Dimitri Bivol outclassed Canelo Alvarez and it had nothing to do with weight. So a lot of people are going to now try to tell you it was the weight. It was the dare to be great, to move up and challenge. Well, he did the same thing when he took on Sergey Kovalev back in 2019, in which he got a 11th round knockout over Sergey Kovalev to become a four division champion and the WBO light heavyweight champion. Now, he was getting out by Sergey Kovalev, the size and the jab with Sergey Kovalev, but it was the skill. It's not them imposing their size. It's the skill set. He won 
probably two to three rounds at max against Dimitri Bivol. The problem is when you have uh, people saying that it was the size. Well, what about when he fought against Floyd Mayweather? He had the advantage. He had the size advantage. He had the youth on his side at 23 and Floyd Mayweather was 36 going on 37. So he was nearly 14 years younger than Floyd Mayweather. He successfully defended his title five times, unified the belts against Austin Trout, who was top three junior uh, middleweights in the world. Two, if you're looking out through the lens of Canelo, because he don't include himself, he can't fight himself. So Austin Trout and Everest Lara were the other two best 154 pounders at that time. He unified the belts against Austin Trout, who was the undefeated champion who just beat Miguel Cotto for his title at 154. He was experiencing a bigger guy, and he lost every single round, every single round to Floyd Mayweather. Then he fought Alfredo Angulo, tailors made for him, where he dominated Alfredo Angulo and knocked him out in the 11th round of their fight. But then he faced another guy who's not extremely much bigger than he is, who's a 154-pounder who campaigned at 154, but people made the case that Erislan De Lara, who's 5'9", with a 74-inch arm reach, and a southpaw, slick Cuban southpaw superstar boxer, could actually fight at 147. And he arguably beat Canelo Alvarez. So now... Canelo Alvarez lose every single round of Floyd Mayweather, a guy who's smaller than him, coming up and wait to challenge him, okay? Then a guy that's his size in his actual weight class at 154 against Erislandi Lara, two fights after losing every round to Floyd Mayweather, he fights Erislandi Lara, and he arguably loses that fight, but the judges find a way to give it to Canelo Alvarez. But he arguably lost that fight. Then he moved up to 160 from 54, and he challenged the unified, then reigning middleweight world champion, Gennady Triple G Golovkin, and he struggled with him. The first fight ended in a draw. And in the second fight, he got the nod, but many people, I thought he won the first fight and the second fight, but they were both very, very, very close, right? But he got the nod, and many people thought he shouldn't, he didn't deserve the nod in that fight. And so now, you had these two close fights with Triple G that you could make a case that he lost both those fights. So you could make a case he lost every round to Floyd Mayweather. He lost to Everson Lara. He was losing badly to Everson Lara. It looked a lot similar to him versus Dimitri Bivol and Floyd Mayweather. The difference is in the second half of the fight, Everson Lara, he decided to unnecessarily utilize the ring and move around the ring unnecessarily because he thought he had the fight in the bag and he didn't want to engage and he took his foot off the gas, put it in cruise control. You can absolutely not do that because we see even when you Floyd Mayweather, you dominate and win every single round against Canelo Alvarez. The judge finds a way to find it a draw. They give Canelo Alvarez six rounds in a fight. Six rounds. And then Dimitri Bivol, who dominates Canelo Alvarez. You can make a case that Canelo Alvarez may have won two rounds at best, three rounds max. And the judge find a way to give him five rounds in that fight and had it a draw going into the ninth round. And he was getting dominated in that fight. So the fact that Erislandi Lara thought you witnessed Floyd Mayweather have a draw, one of the judges call it a draw, they got a split decision victory for Floyd Mayweather. It should have been a dominating unanimous decision, but one of the judges saw it a draw, 6-6. Six, six. And this is before Lara fought him. So Lara was aware that the judge did this because it was outraged because of that scorecard. The judge was suspended. So Laura knew about this. And then Laura should have been aware of the judge's scorecard with the Austin Trout fight. Where both fight both all three judges had Canelo Alvarez winning by a landslide against Austin Trout in a fight that many people saw as a very close fight. But yet Laura decided that he could put it in cruise control in the second half of the fight and feel like he's gonna get the nod and guess what? Split decision victory towards Canelo Alvarez in favor of Canelo Alvarez. But again, he was getting outboxed in that fight with Laura, just like he was with Floyd Mayweather and just like he was with Dimitri Bivol. 
And so now you can make a case that he lost both fights with the Triple G. The Laura fight, Dimitri Beaver fight, and the Floyd Miller fight. You can make a case he got five losses and a draw on his resume. Now, the part, the point in saying that all was Laura is a guy in his weight class. Floyd Miller is a, a weight class below him. Triple G is a guy in his weight class. So it has nothing to do with Dimitri Beaver's size. It has to do with their skill set and the style matchup. And it doesn't favor him. That's why he's free falling on the pound for pound list. Deservingly so. Because now we have watched you in two separate fights. Uh, your biggest fights on the biggest stage. You struggle. He struggled. So now we witnessed that you, you had two fights where you barely won three rounds combined. You can't, that, that doesn't put you on a pound for pound list. So for anybody trying to make up the fact that, well, he just was daring to be great and it, it was a, uh, he bit off more than he could chew. No, he had success at 175. And he was the bigger man against Floyd. He was the same size, if not bigger, than Eroslandi Lara. Same size as Triple G, slightly smaller. Then on top of it, he, he tested positive for, for clenbuterol after the first Triple G fight. That saw him suspended and the second fight being postponed. There's no way you can have him ahead of Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford at this point in time. And I agree with Errol Spence. You are becoming the face of the sport of boxing because Errol Spence consistently sells out AT&T Dallas Cowboys Stadium with 40,000 fans there in attendance. He did the highest gate out of anybody in 2020. And Terrence Crawford deservingly sold in that position because of his longevity and his achievements deserves to be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And now this upcoming Saturday, Jamel Charlo beats Brian Castano. He's going to be ahead of Canelo Alvarez. Now he's a one division champion and he does have a loss and a draw. But the way Canelo Alvarez loses big, he was losing big to Laura in the first half of the fight. He lost big to Floyd and he lost big to Dimitri Bevel. That speaks volumes. So I agree. Now let's see how this plays out moving forward in the future. There's talks that Dimitri Bevel can move down to 168. I don't know why he would give up his advantage to go down to secure a fight with Floyd Mayweather, uh, with uh, Canelo Alvarez after you already dominated him. But that's what he said he's willing to do. Uh, and then Canelo Alvarez is still the undisputed champion at 168. Well, now the fans are really going to call for you to fight Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out moving forward. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L. D B C shout out to new media shout out to black media role. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.